What's up everyone, this is Dr. Webb here. In this video today, I'm gonna to talk about how I study and basically give some tips for you guys. What I used in college, medical school, and now I'm even in residency. Stay tuned. All right, in this video, I'm gonna talk about how I study. When I was in medical school, one of my professors stopped class, I think we were studying uh, renal, and he said that trying to learn in medical school is like trying to drink from a fire hydrant. Also, he said he compared it to trying to throw mud on the wall. So if you grab a big glob of mud when it's raining outside and you try to throw that glob of mud on the wall, there's some of that mud is gonna stick on the wall, but majority of it's gonna fall off. So if you think of all the information that you're trying to learn in medical school, um, you're not gonna remember all that information. It's just too much to learn. It's like learning a new language um, just in those four years of medical school. You're learning a completely new language. Um, and I think they said that you, I've read somewhere that you learn maybe 7,000 new words or something like that, something crazy. So there's so much information that you learn. you have to learn in medical school. It's impossible to learn it all. Um, so when I heard that, that basically um, something clicked in my head and I was like, wow, how am I going to address this? And what I did in medical school and also in residency and how I did well in medical school at Georgetown Medical School was that uh, three things. I had a plan, I reviewed, and then also did questions. So for a plan, uh, say, for instance, we had 50 lectures that were going to be on our exam. And the exam was in, let's say, even number um, uh, five weeks. So that means you have to do, um, if you want to review those lectures three times before the exam, so you have 50 lectures and you have uh, five weeks, that's 10 lectures per uh, per week and then times three, so 30 30 lectures per week. So I would take those 30 lectures and I would divide those up over the week. And I would do maybe four lectures on Monday, four lectures on Tuesday, four on uh, Wednesday. And that's how I had a rolling review of the material. And by the time the test came around, I had reviewed that lecture maybe you know two or three times. Um, the second thing that I did was I used note cards. Now, I still do that to this day in residency. Uh, to get the details down, pharmacology, microbiology, genetics, all those small um, medications, the side effects, the gene defects, which um, I you, you tend to forget. Uh, I made those out of note cards and I would review those at nighttime. The third thing is questions. And I think questions are more important than actual reading. Uh, so you don't have that much time. So if, uh, if they're going through 50 chapters in a freaking test, you don't have time to read all those 50 chapters, but you do questions, you listen and lecture, and then you pick up on things that, you, you, um, that you're that you weak in. You should get majority of the questions right just from going to lecture, but the small details, you need to get those down by note cards or some other type of way. I used to write things out also. And I think that activates a different portion of your brain uh, than actual just reading it. So those note cards, I would have that down too, and then review those like going to the gym if I'm on the bus or the train in DC or the train a lot uh, the metro so I would have note cards um, and there's a couple apps that you can use for that as well so even in residency to this day uh, where it's about 10 times harder to study because I can't sit and study for 12 13 14 hours a day like I did in medical school because I just I don't have the attention span anymore so what you have to do to be effective is you have to be organized. Even at, after working 60, 70 hours a week, 80 hours a week, you still have to come home and read, prepare for case surgeries. You still have to study. Um, you still have exams. Um, I just recently came from Chicago, and I'll put that video right up here, about a uh, basically a review board review course. So at the end of your residency, you take your board exam, and that's how you become board certified. Uh, you take that after your fifth year of surgery training. Uh, but I was at this board review course, and there was a gentleman there that they brung in because he scored a 99th percentile on his board exam. And the way he did that was this. 
90 days before the exam, he did 9,000 questions. 9,000 questions, that's a lot of questions. And I, I, I heard that, and I thought I heard <laughs> heard the wrong thing. I was like, nah, he said 900. He didn't say 9,000. Nah, he, 9,000 questions. And I always tell people, how bad do you want it? This gentleman did 9,000 questions in 90 days. And this is how he did it. Uh, as a chief resident, uh, this is how he went about his day for the last 90 days. He did 100 questions per day is what it comes out to. So 33 questions in the morning when he got up before he even left the house, he did 33 questions, didn't review it really, just kind of uh, you do the questions. You should be able to do them within one minute. And that's how for the for our board exams, that's how uh, the time spent should be about a minute per question. So that should only take you maybe 30 33 minutes or so, a little bit longer maybe. So he did 33 questions in the morning and then throughout the day while he's waiting on surgeries, in between surgeries, uh, while he's maybe waiting for a consult or waiting for his junior residents to come see him, he would do questions uh, throughout the day. So 33 questions. And if he didn't get through those 33 during the day, he would maybe stay and finish the last couple. And then at, the, at nighttime, he would do another 33 questions. So 33 in the morning, 33 throughout his day, and 33 before he goes to bed. So 100 questions, 9,000 for that 90 days. And that's how he uh, scored 99 percentile. So questions are, I would say, most important. You have to figure out your weak areas, and that's how you do it. You get a question wrong, and oh, that's the reason why I got it wrong. The more questions you do, the better your scores are going to be. This is for your medical school exams. This is for step one, step two, step three, for your board exams, for your residency in training exams, for college exams. The more questions you do, the higher your score is going to be. Um, it's been multiple studies out there that have shown that. So um, if the person sitting next to you did 200 questions and you did 5,000, obviously you're going to score higher. So have a plan. Whether you're in college, or you're, whether you're in high school, college, medical school, residency, have a plan written out. I know exactly what I'm going to study this week and what I need to accomplish. Number two is to constantly review that material. And that plan that you came up with should have a way that you can review that material over and over and over again. So some exams in medical school were actually really easy for me because I reviewed that material multiple times. And by the time I actually got to my exam, I had seen that material or that medication, that concept, that disease process 40, 50 times because I reviewed it constantly, constantly review it. And that's how you get the mud to stick on the wall. And I actually see what my professor was saying in medical school. To get that mud to stick on the wall, you have to constantly keep throwing it at it, keep throwing it at it, because a good percentage of that's going to go right through your head, right through your ears. You're going to forget about it. You have to constantly review it. And the third thing is to do questions. So that's how I have been successful in college and medical school and also in residency. Um, it's basically doing those three things. Have a plan, review it constantly, and do questions. This is Dr. Webb. Thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe. New videos come in every week. You don't want to miss these new videos. We'll see you next time.